Wow, Jesus. You did amazing. I'm good. Thank you, buddy. Wow, man. I really uh, sense the presence of God here. How about you guys? This is, this is going to be good, man, so we'll see. Uh, but, yeah, first off, just what an honor uh, to be with you all, but uh, with Michael and Anna Dow, listen to me, they're cream of the crop. I'm so appreciate it, man. You know, the, the feelings are mutual. But uh, just want to honor him for a second. Yes, yeah, so, bro, seven years. The problem is I've got more grays, and you look the same. You know what I'm saying? He's just shredded and, and uh, like, gets younger. But, but yeah, um, you know, I know many of you already know, but just we've been together for years and just love and honor Michael and Anna Dow to know him. They are the real deal. Uh, for those of you that are visiting and may not know, listen to me, any book, anything that has to do with anything with the Dow's, you want to eat it up and get all of it. I mean, look, I've got the hoodie. <laughs> I mean, I like, give me one of those, man. We've got the gold glory and uh, I'm just feeling really like my swag is maxed out right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, um, but no, he's, he's the real deal, man. And it's, it's awesome. We're, we're both um, super busy now by the grace of God, but it's like the Lord always, we're, we're always crossing paths as well. And anytime we talk, um, it's like we never just left off. And uh, I think it's pointed enough. I could go in so many different directions when I'm talking about Michael, but I'm reminded, uh, I love to point this out. I stayed with them several years ago. I was ministering at their house church. So what you see here, there's so much more behind the scenes with Burning Ones, Michael Dow, uh, Frankie Janelle, the whole leadership, man, Stephen and the whole crew, they're just cream of the crop leaders that I believe are the new model God's really uh, implementing in the earth. And so I'm saying at his house, and I love the prophetic, but it's sometimes like, you guys get the prophetic in here, dreams, visions, it just gets interesting. And so, okay, the back row is like, yeah, <laughs> let's do that. No, uh, but no, I enjoy it, but sometimes it's like, wow, because you, you pick up on things. So I'm staying at Michael Dow's house. And, bro, you remember this. I start getting taken into the, seriously, never before or since has this happened. I start seeing, so, and I have some things, too. I don't know that we'll get there tonight, if that's okay, because I felt something in worship that I really feel um, is, is for the house more individually and then some more national stuff that I was sensing, too, that's going to tie into this convocation. Maybe tomorrow morning, we'll see. But I sense, man, there's something to do with specific assignments and us coming into alignment with that over our life. A lot of us, man, there's this track the Lord has us. He's trying to get us on, and we're real close often, but not quite there. And sometimes the spirit of wisdom and revelation in these type of meetings by the spirit come, and I feel like that's going to hit. But So I'm standing, I'm standing at his house, and I start going on all these dreams of like the end times crazy stuff. I could foresee clone type things being put together and just all this futuristic things that I knew were coming. And the Lord spoke to me clearly that Michael, that what I was in, the midst of, uh, Michael Dow's work was end time worthy. And that may not mean a lot to you all now, but I now see it playing out and growing, you know, by the day and the month. But the model, I would just encourage you guys, sometimes we have to think outside of the box, but the model by which he builds, the blueprint of heaven. We were on the phone the other day. He's like, look, man, I'm not just trying to throw darts on the map. Like, that's what I love about him. He does what he sees the Father doing. And that's it. And that's the model Jesus, you know, led before us, doing only what he saw the Father doing. And even how we ended up here is crazy. So he, you already told them, right? He's never been to Wisconsin. Uh, the Cheeseheads, man. How many of you from, are from Wisconsin here? Come on, okay. Yeah, I was going to the airport, and I saw the Cheeseheads. I was like, we have arrived. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Uh, but I've, it's been years since I've been up here, and both – he and I were saying, it was really the Lord. I won't bog down the, the session over how it happened. But really, he heard from the Lord. They reached out to me, and, and then uh, I believe Anna was like, man, is he even available? And it just so happened I was going to be here this weekend, which I'm never. It's been years. And, uh, and then how heaven spoke to me. And anyway, I just really just want to build your faith and expectancy. I really feel I'm here to encounter Jesus in a fresh way. I really feel like something's on this weekend. There's a lot of people I know have heard similar, been in fasting and prayer, and so I wouldn't just tiptoe into the meetings like it's another, like, shakalaka, just glory, you know, glory visit. 
I want to encourage you, really, man, when we meet heaven, everything can change in an instant. And uh, sometimes our hunger and expectancy can either set that up or, or lower that bar. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, I'm standing in his house, and I'm like, man, he's, he's building end-time-worthy type work that is not easily shaken. And how many of you know that's very important as the body of Christ right now in this hour? As we've seen, this year's been nothing but shaking. Demetria, already able to give her a hug. Can we give it up for the worship team? Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah. Bro, this guy. And, uh, and Anna, oh, my goodness, but love Demetria dearly, honor her to no end. Um, but end time worthy and just the, the level they're working at. I'll tell you another thing. This is a glitch if you ever stay at the Dow's house. So as you can see, he's shredded. They're, they're, I just love to share some of the non-spiritual stuff. So I think it's good to see the back end of like preacher's worlds. And so I, I uh, so you need to know this about them. Okay. They're very diligent above anybody I know about working out. And I'm like, good. Yeah, I work out, man. I love the little cardio. I so lift some weights. That's not what they do. So <laughs> I can promise you, if you pray in tongues for hours, the Holy Spirit will never tell you to work out with them <laughs> ever. <laughs> You are missing God if he, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I know this by now. I've done one with him. Anna's like talking trash, like, you're soft. I'm like, man, I'm <laughs> in love, in love. But she's like, you know, and uh, no, I'm teasing. So what you do is, listen, this is their workout and, and kind of morning routine, the regiment for the day. They get up well before the sun, seek heaven. That's what everybody wants to do. That's the way, what Jesus does. And... Uh, I heard somebody the other day say the, uh, anyway, uh, so, but after that, <laughs> uh, after that, they go right into this insane CrossFit. CrossFit totally came from the pit of, you know, I don't know who invented that. <laughs> I'm teasing. It's amazing. I'm just kind of a wuss with it. So, uh, right after they see heaven, they go right into this CrossFit routine. I mean, sun's just coming up and it's brutal. And then's breakfast. So listen, and it's incredible. Anna can cook. Uh, it's just insane. So what you do is you prolong your secret place and act more spiritual. At their house, you just shalaba, brata. You know, you just <laughs> one more track, and you just hit repeat one more time, and you keep, and you kind of peek out the garage, and they're still they're still crossfitting. <laughs> and then you come out right when they're done. You're like, oh my god, is it breakfast already? You're kidding me, man. Maybe I'll catch y'all tomorrow on the uh, CrossFit. But no, man, but really the, the humility, authenticity, the character, the excellence, I mean, there's just none other. And, and so when he called me, I'm like, uh, I'm in, man, anything with Dow. But I, I, I know more than just uh, us. This is set up by heaven, so really encouraged to, to be with you guys. And, and we'll jump in. I, I'm feeling tonight um, that, are we kind of watching a time? or Okay. Okay, well, I saw a few prophetic things um, any of you that have not quite heard me before, I wouldn't try and take notes, not real wise, uh, in these type of settings. I'm <laughs> just, just helping you, just helping you. And because um, I'm a bit all over the place uh, at times. Okay, but I do want to share um, a few prophetic things I saw that I know should apply. Oh, Blondo, love you, dude. He's a legend. There's just people all up in here, leaders. and. And I'll get bogged down forever, Sean and Carla. So, Tim and Bill, and I'm teasing. I just keep going, you know. But, uh, okay, this is um, good. So, you all get the prophetic, um, you know, the Lord speaks in, in symbols, dreams, visions, things like this. So, I'm on the plane uh, the, way, the way here this morning. And uh, I think tomorrow I may go more, some of the national stuff, if that's okay. Because that's another thing you need to know. Listen to me. Uh, I, I think you will probably build more of the storyline the last night. Yep. These are no joke. Listen, we, we, I've been in all kinds of streams, meetings, and I love it all. But um, I can tell you, when you follow the storyline, I've been known from the beginning. It's such an honor to be in, um, I want to say Vancouver with you at another one. They're super strategic, calculated. We're talking dreams down to area codes, dates, foreseen way before uh, these meetings. So you're stepping into a real divine juncture of heaven. And... Um, and it'll blow your mind when you see the, the storyline that threads through. And, and what I want to encourage you is, is these have a ripple effect that touch the nation. You say, no way. 
No, I'm telling you they do. Uh, what was it? Abraham, just 10 people, righteous, can save it, save a region. And, and so what this leads into, really the grand slam of it is the last night. I'm so honored to play a small uh, part in it in, in the middle here. But leading up to Dow's last session, the storyline and what it cracks in the spirit. Just being honest with you guys. How many of you know we wrestle not against flesh and blood? But spiritual realms, and there's something, there's an assignment. I've known it for years. Look, when I first met Michael, and he, the thing is, he's just not going to tell you this, and it's a real big thing to honor, but also set things where they need to be set in place. And so we met, bro, I think it was Tampa, and I'm like, I knew he was a gunner already, uh, just with what he carried, and Daniel Clinda, a mutual friend, and I knew all that. But right out of the gate, man, I see this vision. You remember, I told you about it with this exact verse, and he's on this head, uh, big book, and I just knew the weight on a, on a national level he would carry from way back. And we've seen it uh, built throughout these years. And so all that being said, it, what, what's going to hit in the spirit has regional, but then to national implications. They're really big. And uh, even like, for instance, I was on the plane, one of the things I just saw with, with you, Michael, I know you know this, but... When the prophetic is cracked open, to see a little further into it, it just helps confirm and, and build and edify. And so I saw the, I knew this was connected to you, the American flag, which is funny. It's, the, uh, it's part of the symbol. But so is the full American flag, but it was, it was a wind right now, a current in our nation trying to blow it the wrong way, the opposite way, like you never see the flag. You know, you always see the flag, the stars on the top left corner, stripes go this way, Right. Well, it was trying to blow this way, and I knew the Lord was telling me what thou carries and, and what he embodies through fasting and prayer in their corporate body, and they draw regions in, divine by heaven, in heaven's design, is flipping the nation back by the wind of the Spirit under the kingdom of heaven. Really, and I'm telling you, you'll get to heaven one day. This, these are the type assignments, which is so much more they do, that get noted by heaven and they often can be overlooked in the natural because you may not see the smoke or the mirrors or all the whatever it may be. Or I love what Frankie was talking on, uh, the branding. And, man, that was good. He's like, man, he's stealing your brain. <laughs> That's awesome, man. But, um, but I knew what he carries. Listen to me. It, it's like the rock you drop in a pond, and you start to see the first ripples in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and then further out to the state, but to the nation. And how many of you know as our nation goes still, goes the world. I'm just being honest with you. That's not an arrogant thing, but I'm t you, it's just crystal clear. We're still the top power. We will not be. I'm not trying to doom and gloom you, but I'm just telling you with where things are going and, and things that are foreseen. But while we have this chance for this harvest, man, and what the Lord's trying to do, you shift and fight. You don't just sit back. And so um, maybe we'll go into some more of that uh, tomorrow morning and then let him land it, of course. And I, I believe it's going to shift there's a big difference. What I love is individually over our homes, we have the say-so because you have the authority and the leverage over your home, right? And we do battle in the heavens, but then there's certain regional aspects that you've got to hit the heavens to then free it up and let the kingdom trickle through it. Does that make sense? So tonight I'll probably do more personal. But this is one thing I saw on the plane. I know it's a little out there, but heaven's all over the place, and he just loves people. But I saw there's four people here. Uh, in a vision. Presence got sweet. They weren't messing with me about my mask. Praise God. <laughs> if you like those, I don't care. They're, I mean, they're great, but they're, just, they're hard to breathe through and stuff, man. But, but presence got good, went into a vision, and I saw um, there's at least four people here. The Lord is wanting you to be water baptized. And how many of you know that's very important to the Lord? Peter, I went to the steps in Israel. He preached the day of Pentecost. He says, repent and be baptized. Water baptism is really, really big. You don't hear it preached a whole lot anymore. And, um, but there, there's four of you at least here. I just want to encourage you. Maybe you've never been water baptized. Um, I'm not trying to get in a theological thing with you. But uh, I know when I see these things by the Spirit, man, it's important to heaven. Uh, or some of you may say, man, I just feel like my first one, my, my heart wasn't in it. Whatever it may be. But I believe it's like at least four people here. And, um, man, I, I'll baptize you. Do they have a water baptism pool here anywhere? Oh, are you, the, are you the leaders here? Uh, oh, the pastor. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Such an honor to meet you <laughs> and, uh, and be in your house. Thank you so much. But no, no, don't make one. But I mean, <laughs> but just saying, I would be glad to, or we, you know, we could, or um, hotel, pool, whatever, or your church or wherever your leadership is. We just want to encourage you guys that, um, how many of you know we need to get back to the full word of God? I love this thing, man. Look, don't, well, some things aren't relevant. No, this is relevant right here, this, the whole thing. 
preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils. Look, I was just in a Baptist church in uh, Texas. They had cactuses. I was so far deep in Texas, wherever we were. Uh, bro, I kid you not, I was with my son. We were driving through. We were like, bro, since when? We were down by the Mexican border is what it was. We were getting way down there, down towards Mexico. We see uh, Dairy Queen, a sign for Dairy Queen. The menu on the menu was like, was it enchiladas? or It was... Yeah, El Taco does. I was like, Dairy Queen has tacos? <laughs> and I was like, okay. I see, we're getting way down here. <laughs> but I love it. I'm sure they were good. Uh, but Baptist Church miracles, man, heaven was just flowing. Legs, uh, 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 and I want to, if we get a chance, um, you know, if any of you are sick in your bodies, it's just Jesus doing the stuff he does. He does it anyway. But he preached, taught in synagogues, went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. But, um, man, this one girl's leg was shorter than the other. Her back was all messed up. Leg grew out in front of her. She couldn't believe it. Indian girl down by Mexico. So crazy. They, they fed us curry after was incredible. So you heal, you know, you see the sick heal, they feed you. But um, <laughs> shoulders, just, just stuff was popping. Uh, people were being healed, so we want to pray for you. But also... Um, in this hour, listen, fasting and prayer, living pure, fasting and prayer. I feel like that one didn't land. <laughs> um, I mean, just going after heaven, man, cutting out the things of, of, uh, of this world and trying to get more set apart in, for him in this hour. You can feel it. And just want to encourage you guys. So I want to talk on that real briefly, but for people, um, baptism, if that makes sense to you or you feel like, yeah, that, that's me, um, you know, come get any of us. What we can figure it out, or if you have a pastor, uh, these things matter. And then um, one more that I, I know is a little interesting. But right when the wheels touched down in Milwaukee, I was still in prayer. The wheels, wham! Right when they hit, I saw um, it's crystal clear, man. Uh, the the peanut M and M's. I know this sounds funny, but the whole logo, the yellow whew, flash up, real clear. It's like, what is that about? Um. And I look them up. I was like, well, I didn't regular. It was specifically the yellow peanut. And so we all know a peanut. What it is is it's two, typically, if you look up even an image of a peanut, it's two uh, nuts in one shell. It's two becoming one. There's something to do with the covenant there. But the M&M ties back to Illinois, Chicago. So there's really, and I already knew this from area code stuff. I don't know, you know, how it all ties in. But there's something with us in this area this weekend. And whatever you're doing connected as one with something in Chicago. Oh, was it? The last one of these? Oh, the last one was in Chicago. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I just, I, that's all I know to connect with that. But whatever heaven's on that, but right when the wheels touch down, there's something to do with the, the connection of two and one and, and what you're doing. So, so awesome. So let me shut this. We're just going to kind of wing it, act like we know what we're doing. No, I'm teasing. And, uh, and just set this thing up to pray. How many of you need healing in your bodies? Um, okay, awesome. Man, man, Wisconsin's a healthy place, bro. Normally way more hands go up. Um, and, and if you don't want prayer, we can pray corporately. You know, I get that just so you know. I've been kind of all over settings, and we just want to honor wherever you're at in, in that whole thing. So, um, But listen to me. The Holy Ghost is way more contagious than COVID. I'm just telling you, boy, he's dangerous. He is dangerous. <laughs> some people catch colds. Some people catch COVID. Other people catch the Holy Ghost <laughs> and fire. And look, if you're hungry, he will jump on you, I'm telling you. And uh, he doesn't know anything about healing. He just obliterates it. He really does. He will blow it clean out, and, and, and that's awesome too. But so, so real quick, I just want to talk to you. Um, Briefly, you know, a little bit about that, but I sense really strongly uh, here and again in worship that there's something to do with the, the assignment, a specific assignment that's on your life, and some of us aren't quite on that track, which I've been there. I don't even know a lot of your Christian walk feels that way, if you're honest. Uh, mine has a, a lot. And then right when you feel like you're on a track in the right season, it's like, hold on, and he's, he's changing them. He goes glory to glory. So it could be even that for you, which is fine. But recently, um, there's going to be kind of a mixture, but I was in Matthew 3, and you see this upon a lot of generals in Scripture, these specific assignments. You could, if you really look at them fresh, 
through a fresh lens in the word, you see like, man, they were really honed out specifically by heaven for that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I get it. We always apply generally to we love God, love our neighbor. There's a general application always. We preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devil. That's what we do. Um, but also you can typically see this, this through Old and New Testament, this specific grace or anointing or assignment upon people's life. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And if we're not careful in this hour, we can start to follow currents that we see work for others, try and replicate things. And I've seen that done a lot. Listen to me, being around ministry, you see it happen a lot. I don't blame them. I've done it, I'm sure, plenty. I, I get it. But you aren't fully walking in that thing that heaven has for you. Does that make sense? And, and then a, well, what happens then is that God's voice is a little obscure there, that, that current. It's almost like you hop in a boat, a sailboat, but that wind isn't fully there. So you've got to put more strength to keep it going. Listen, I've seen this happen. I've seen other people watch others in what would look like kingdom, try and create the same boat and get it going and jump out on the water and there's no wind. The sail's flat. And it's because heaven's like, look, I love you. Your salvation isn't that question here, but that's not the assignment I have for you. And so, um, uh, what is it, Matthew 3, you see John the Baptist running about um, preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Do you all remember that? John the Baptist, can I walk around or is that going to mess something up? Um, get some water before I go on this cardio <laughs> around. <laughs> this pulpit is nice to with the shelf. But anyway, so uh, he's, he's preaching, you know, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Matthew 3. And it stuck out to me. This is also just a message I've been seeing, man, this, this spirit of Elijah hitting the earth again, of a just crystal clear message of turn again from the ways of this world, get fully de detached and fully attached to the kingdom. And I want that to land along with this assignment. Lord, help me. Open my eyes, open my ears. Frankie gave me these Earplugs. I was right by the speaker, by the way. It was amazing, but I was like, Ding, my ribs are shaking. And I was like, I got to have ears to hear, Lord. <laughs> so he, he gave me some, uh, so graciously gave me some earplugs so I could, I could hear. Uh, but both, I want both to land. While, while this concept, I was wondering too, I was just beginning to see it a lot here where the Lord's like, look, tell him, man, get out. And like, well, but we compare ourselves to others. But there's, listen, there's a whole nother, I heard it said recently, this is the best way I can really, um, explain it, there's a big difference between positional righteousness, right, that we know we have in Jesus Christ. There's a chair there. When you're born again, you are given that in Jesus Christ, positional righteousness. But then there's another chair called relational righteousness, and they're very different chairs. And what's happening is often, I've been guilty of this plenty, we, we sit in our relational chair far away from the positional one. And there's a very mysterious verse in Hebrews 10, I think verse 14, where, where it says, Jesus has forever made perfect positional righteousness, those that are being made holy, relational righteousness. Is, are y'all hearing that? It's a crazy verse. I thought it was a typo at first. I was like, man, what? I went to different versions. They all say pretty much the same thing. But what, what I feel the Lord doing right now is trying to drag that relational chair and match it up to the positional chair. Really, man, he, it, look, not a condemning thing. He loves you, but this bride he longs for, her chair is right in sync with the positional chair. And I'm hearing and sensing, you know, there's still a lot of lingo and well, but, but I can't do it. It's all the righteousness of Christ. Yes, it is. But also, 2 Timothy 2, Paul writes to Timothy, says, look, you want to be a special utensil for the kingdom of God? Keep yourself pure. Well, but I thought it was all Jesus, and he's done it, and it's all righteousness in Christ. It is, but Paul knew that relational chair has got to match up. Does that make sense to you guys? And um, just things I've been seeing and sensing, and it, again, it's out of his goodness. He's like, brother, there's bondage over there. There's not full destiny there. He's trying to line these chairs up. And so the spirit of Elijah is obviously coming again. We know it by Scripture, but it's like it's increasing as the kingdom nears doesn't it say, uh, yeah, the king is coming. So, but as the kingdom comes more near, it's like that spirit of Elijah, we all know, he prepares the way. So Matthew 3, it says Jesus, um, or sorry, about John the Baptist before Jesus came. He preached, his sole message was repent, which basically means, look, if you're going this way, 
by deed and mentality and ideology and it's not the way of the kingdom, stop it and turn the other way. You guys realize that? You don't have to come down there and beat your chest and all that stuff. You can. I like all of it. But, but it's like, it's literally tur a turning away. So John's like, look, you're going this way. Turn the other way. The king, uh, the, the kingdom is at hand. So it stuck out to me in a really strange way. If you jump over one chapter, it says John the Baptist got locked up in jail. You all remember that? Um, meaning that mouthpiece of that declaration is now locked up. It's shut down. That mouthpiece is shut down. He, he can't, like, go podcast from the prison or anything. It's done. So, and, and, and it even says Isaiah, it said about John the Baptist, his sole assignment was to prepare the way of the Lord. So he had this just ornate call about him, that this is what he did real, real well. And you'll see that upon people. There's graces and anointings and, and certain assignments, and that's what we need, you to be you fully in your assignment, because that completes the body. Like, we don't need another me, trust me. We need a bunch of Frankies, but we need a few. No, <laughs> but, like, uh, that's what makes the body. So I think that's beautiful that you'd free yourself up to be like, you know what, I can go back in heaven and find out that blueprint for me. Of course, it looks just like Jesus, but also it looks like a hand of Jesus, but the feet, it's his body. It looks very different from person to person. Does that make sense to you guys? Look at Daniel, Joseph, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, axe heads floating. I mean, very different assignments and call, all leading to the same result and goal, him. So anyway, it was very unique, though, and, and I'm kind of mixing the, these messages, but also to land it with our assignment. So John gets locked up. It says about him. His main assignment was to prepare the way of the Lord. And so how did he do it? The, the Bible was clear. It says he preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So you would think, like, that's the message. That's what's preparing Jesus to come because his call was to prepare the way of the Lord. You, you all remember that. Well, ironic enough, Matthew 4, Jesus just comes out of a 40-day fast full of the Holy Spirit and power into his assignment now. Fully God, fully man. And it says, Jesus heard John the Baptist just got locked up. And it says, at, once Jesus heard that, it says, at that time, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I was like, I thought that's what John was doing. You understand? Basically, Jesus said, oh, that, his mouthpiece, it's my time now. I just came out, let me get that baton. And he kept preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it was, I believe, a dualistic approach, meaning John for sure preached that to prepare Jesus to come because now he's at hand, but also Jesus preached into our day. He would always do it. He'd talk through the disciples into our day. He'd talk through the seven churches in Revelation into our day. And what's happening is it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. The king is coming. The kingdom of heaven is very near. And this may be some things I share tomorrow about Revelation. It's just this thread of things I've been seeing, man. And so what I'm sensing is that same spirit, that same message. He's like, listen, repent. Get the relational chair to the position of when I'm coming from my bride. Listen, repent. And you're not going to slow down his coming. Actually, time's speeding up, it feels. Are you guys sensing that? And it's like those chairs are coming into one, but of course by his grace. That's, hopefully at some point I'll go there, of course by intimacy. You can't even think about living pure without loving him well. That's first and foremost always. Hebrews, throw off those sins that so easily entangle you, but you know what it says for you to throw them off. Well, if Jesus wanted to do it, I'm righteous in him while we sit in this chair over here with foxes all over the place. You know what I mean? And like, no, but the Lord said I'm going to shake the nations. No, you're not. You're not. Sorry, man. Like, we, you know what I'm saying? This chair, they've got to align. And uh, I'm not trying to, oh, sorry, I'm not trying to be uh, heavy, but listen, he's trying to get these chairs right because he's coming back. I'm telling you, I start seeing the newsreel of heaven. Look, you go above the noise down here. That None of it's even accurate anyway. And he's really in, a, in an ecstatic, infatuated way of his bride. He's like, you yeah, love me. Look, gaze. Get lost in me. Get lost in me. Shut off the other voices. Invest everything into me right now. You heard, Frankie. It's all about glorifying him, falling mad in love with him. And he'll start to just thump foxes, foxes just punting them. Man, did I ever tell the story in the Dominican Republic where I kicked a chihuahua? He, I treated him like a little fox, man. I love dogs. We have one. But this one needed to be humbled. <laughs> you want to hear that story or no? No, she doesn't. Okay. He's alive. He's fine. <laughs> man, it was a Nike Air Max, bro. Boom. 
in full stride. No, so, so anyway, um, but you can feel it, man. He's like, yeah, 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 just get lost in me. But Hebrews, it says, you know, that we throw off those sins that so easily entangle us looking unto him. They're inseparable. You look and gaze to him. Jesus, you're everything to me. You're amazing. I need you more now today than ever before, even yesterday. The bread of your presence and voice is, is everything to me. So addicting and altogether lovely. You mean I get another couple hour break over here, Jesus? I just want to be with you. Consume me. And, and you get a little crazy, but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> to, to those that love the chair way over there, they think, man, you're a little out there. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting more out there because I'm just so addicted to him. He's everything. He's perfect. And your steps begin to just click into that track of what your assignment is. You can't, it can't not happen. The, look, let's say Jesus is the vine. I've done this a, a zillion times. John 15. Imagine a beautiful vine in this pulpit. He made it so simple, thank God. Because, look, I barely got through high school. I had to go to summer school. Bible school, horrible, man. Like a C in hermeneutics. Um, it, where's Jeff, too, and Carol? I love them. Are they in here? Yeah, yeah. They're amazing. I heard Carol crushed it. And, and Jeff, he's gracious on me, man. And uh, But anyway. But look, man, John 15, he says, abide in, he says, I am the vine. I am it. The vertical plumb line, plumb line of heaven, him. He's, uh, Jesus is everything. I am the vine. He, that's, he says, just abide in me. Get lost in him. Then you bear fruit. The fruit comes from the, the track, the finding that assignment. It comes from those that, man, listen, I, I've, I'm trying to wonder how to do this, but, but you can just... You can hear it now, you know, I'm, I'm around different whatever, and uh, you can just see it at times and hear the tone people talk about the Lord or not, and it's okay. I love and honor everywhere I go, but it's like they, you know, because if we're not careful, you can get into this Martha thing of being real busy and assignment-based, and you, and you almost check off your resume and your, your security in that, and it's not in that. It's in the abiding and those that love him and know him deeply. And I'll get around people like, man, super gifted, but I don't hear that on the, I can tell. It's like a banker with money, you can tell. Like he doesn't woo them anymore, you know what I mean? And, and it's not to get into, we're not trying to be those type people. But right now in this hour, listen to me, he's looking for John the Baptist, Spirit of Elijah, he coined the phrase, the bridegroom. Those that abide deeply in him. That word abide means to dwell or reside. Sometimes our word abides like a high five on the way to work with this fast-paced society. No, 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 no. Look, take whole days. Well, you're getting legal, brother. You know what I mean? If you're, if you're deeply infatuated with him, a day is like it just blows by. And I would encourage you guys, you say, well, man, it's tough. I get it. I've been there too. I'm just, I don't feel that hunger in that pool. Just go. I say this often that diligence sometimes is what's required to lead into delight. A lot of people all hear it, that delight's not there. That's okay, just stay the course. Look at him long enough, and then you'll get pulled into this vacuum of he who is love, and you can't get your eyes off. That's when hours begin to fly by. Listen, on a daily basis, if you can, just practically, begin to go after him to where you get so sucked into the vacuum of his glory that times, you, you notice when you get into rich presence, you could sense it as they, they took us in, that time kind of goes by and by. You start to lose time in, in the doubts. It's at Isaiah 40. You ascend above the mountains that are so low. The cares in, of this world and, and things like this start to fade. Uh, I want to encourage you guys on a daily basis. You want to enter into quality realms of his presence and, and be lost in him. So anyway, um, but back to that, you see Jesus also just grabbed the baton, the baton, which looked to be super specific to John's call. But he kept preaching the same thing. And it was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and that's another thing I'm sensing lately. I just want to reiterate that uh, I really see this uh, alignment the Lord's doing in our hearts to a more narrow path. Does that make sense to some of you guys? Uh, in a very loving way, um, some people he'll get rough with too. And, and that's okay. He's done that with me, boy. And uh, <laughs> He disciplines those he loves either way. But um, if he's not disciplining you, I, I get nervous. So um, 
the, the narrow path of, of loving him really well and, and living pure. And just want to encourage you guys in that. But um, back to the, the assignment thing as well, I just want to interject it both. Um, I just want to pray here in a second that there's something to do with uh, that assignment just in this now season, I believe the Lord can unlock, where we look to him, and it's like it, it makes it clear where we can make decisions and follow into that track, um, if that makes sense to you guys. So why don't you go ahead and stand, and we'll just kind of get in a place of prayer. I want to open to lay hands on some people if they're sick in their bodies. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> hey, what did he do to his arm, man? Broke it, bro. Really? Wow. You fell or pl playing sports or what? Wow. Did you land it? Obviously not. Wow. Little stud muffin. <clears throat> oh, yeah, awesome. You guys can go whichever direction you want. So we'll do that first. If that's okay, just pray corporately that he would um, bring us better into alignment with him. I didn't need to really beat, beat that any further, but you guys get it. A relational, like, help me, Lord. Align my life. Detach from the things of this world to attach to you. Listen, when a bride's getting ready to meet the bridegroom, typically very little distractions are in the way. There's one aisle. There's one person they're going to, and that's what the hour we're in. Listen to me. That, what what we did in the past isn't going to work anymore. And to to get to the uh, full place of destiny, we've got to have a full gaze on Him, full consecration, set apart, and uh, and even issues of the heart. You know, I know we're all at different places, but sometimes it's not blatant sin. It's like gossip and and things that. You know, the Lord, we, we've just allowed to stay there and our heart gets calloused over time because we've just shoved the Holy Spirit off enough and he wants to come in afresh on a tender heart again. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. So, yeah, just look to him. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for the highway of holiness. Thank you that... Um, Right now, just the ease of a corporate repentance, just you and the Lord right now, those things that, um, those sins that have so easily set in and entangled us, you let go of now by his grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. gaze upon you intimacy like never before Just begin to look at Jesus. Look directly at him, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come. We just make room for you now. Make room for you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, even online, those watching, move, Holy Spirit. And in this house, there's something to do with fresh revelation this weekend. 
according to assignments and specific calls, graces, to get that sailboat back in the current of the Holy Spirit wind for your life. for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you and your will. <clears throat> 